Hi everyone, it's Lisa from A Simple Season. You know, lately I've been hearing so many stories about people being left without power and unable to cook their meals due to hurricanes or huge spikes in energy costs. So I've been exploring some different ways to be able to cook food off grid without using electricity. Now we do have a Coleman stove as a backup with some propane canisters that we use if we want to cook say out at a beach or the park and we do use that in, in the event that we lose power. However, I thought it's nice to have a backup for your backups. So the method that I chose to experiment with today, and it is an experiment because I've never done it before, was using tea light candles. So we're gonna do this together and we're gonna see if we can cook a meal using these. Now I have seen people use this method before with varying results. So today I'm gonna to see if I can finagle things to get the best result using this particular method for cooking food. So let's get started and let's see what we can do. So here's my little science experiment for today. I'm going to see if uh, I can actually use some tea lights to cook up some rice. So here I have some tin foil that I, I took a sheet of it off, I doubled it over. Um, so it's basically double thick like this. And I'm just gonna create some little walls here and put the tea lights inside it. And I've just got it sitting on top of my, my stove top here. So I've got nine tea lights. So I'm just going to put these in the middle of the tin foil because the bottom of this can get hot. So that's why I'm doing it on top of the stove. And this grate I just found at the thrift store. So I'm not really sure what it was from, but I thought this might be perfect to just see if this experiment works. And I would say it probably sits about two inches or so above the tea light. So hopefully that should be enough. Um, space to have the heat transfer from the tea lights to the pot. So I'm going to light these and then I've got my pot and some rice and we'll take it from there. So I'm just going to light one of the tea lights and then I'm going to use that one to light all of the others. Okay, so all of these are lit up. So now I'm just gonna put my grate over it. I'm gonna put my pot over the top. This is one cup of cold water. I'm gonna put in about a half a teaspoon of salt, tiny splash of oil, and this is a half a cup of rice. Okay, and we'll just give this a little stir just so that hopefully it won't stick to the bottom of the pot and cover it up and we'll see how long it takes. So the time right now, see if I can zero in on this, it says 155. So we'll see how long it takes to cook the rice. So now it's been about 15 minutes and if I lift the lid, check that out. It is literally just bubbling away in there. Wow, I am so impressed. I was not expecting to get these results. So very, very cool. So we'll see how long it takes to cook this in total. Here's the time now, it's 2.27. And I just had to turn the lights off so you could actually see the time that I have on my stove here. But I'm gonna turn it back on. So let's lift the lid, 227, so we started at 155, and that is some fine looking rice. I mean, look at the steam coming off of that. And I'm just gonna have a little taste of it. Mmm, that's really, really good. So that turned out so good. So we started at 155 with one cup of cold water, a half a cup of uncooked rice, lit my tea light candles, nine of them put the lid on, and 227 we have a pot of beautiful rice. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. 
So to recap why I think this actually worked so well is I think making the little walls here with the tin foil really just helps concentrate the heat upwards. Um, I've seen other people do it, but they lay the tin foil flat and without making the little walls. And I think a lot of the heat kind of dissipates if you just leave it flat like that. By just making this little kind of one inch wall though, I think it just directs more of the heat upwards. And also um, the length of the grill. So this I feel like is just, I think it's maybe just under two inches um, sitting above the tea lights. So I think that's a really good distance to get your water to boil. Now I did only um, boil up one cup of water and a half a cup of rice. So I don't know how much longer it would take if you did more, but certainly it does get hot enough to um, you know, heat up water to make coffee or heat up a can of soup. I mean, this is great. This is so cool for um, you know times where the electricity is out and you just don't have any other options. I mean, obviously I would use a propane stove because I, I have a propane stove, but if I'm ever out of propane and I'm just in a pinch, I'm just glad to know that this method works. So now that that rice turned out so good, I'm getting a little ambitious. So I'm gonna throw my fry pan on the top and I'm gonna add a couple of uh, spoonfuls of oil in here and I'm gonna cook up some vegetables to go with that rice. Okay, so right away I can tell I'm not getting that real sizzling action that I really want to, um, as it, you know, if I wanted to stir fry these peppers. So I'm trying to get a gauge on how hot um, I think this is. And if I had to guess, it seems like if I had, um, you know, out of 10 on my, um, my gauge, my, my stove gauge, it would probably be sitting at about a four to uh, maybe not quite a five, but probably about a four. So not hot enough to fry unless maybe I use more tea lights. That might be something I might want to try. So I'm just gonna add a couple more tea lights here just to see if I can get this any hotter to heat up the fry pan. All right, so I added two more candles to the bottom here to cover more of the surface area of the bottom of the pot and also to get the BTUs up a little bit higher. And if I lift the lid, you can hear there's a little bit of that sizzling going on. Now obviously it's not super, super hot. I bet you if I added two more tea lights, it would probably sizzle a lot more but I've got 11 under there, so probably 13 would be the ticket, but this is certainly hot enough to cook your vegetables. So these probably only need another two minutes and they'll be done. And this really turned into a great little meal, hot cooked rice with peppers, and it was so delicious. And because I'm on a roll now with this, I'm having fun with it. So here I'm gonna try and make some tea. So I've got two cups of cold water in this pot. It's 3.05, I'm going to put the lid on and we'll see how long it takes to get this hot enough to make tea. It's taken a little bit of time to boil up our water for tea. It's about 3.35, but if I lift this lid, have a look at that. So it took about 25 minutes, but it's boiling and definitely hot enough to make tea or if you wanted to cook some pasta. So let's make some tea. So I'm going to make some decaf pumpkin spice because why not? And I'm gonna add a little bit of powdered milk to it and give it a stir and let it steep. Now this I'm sure goes without saying, but after you've blown out your candles, don't touch the grates here like I did because this is very, very hot. And I don't know if you can see that, but I got a nice little blister there because I touched it way too soon. So obviously let it cool down and you'll do a lot better than I did. 
So overall, I was really happy with how all of that turned out. I think it's so great to have an alternative method to cook your food if you ever lose access to your normal power supply. So as I said, we normally do use a Coleman stove, which I think would be obviously more effective for heating up big pots of water and cooking for a large amount of people. But to heat up a can of soup, cook some rice, make some coffee, heat up with some canned chicken to go with your meal, I think it's great to have a backup to your backup. So hopefully you'll be able to give that a try and let me know in the comments if you did. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.